Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? Hey. All right, all right. Well, thank you all for joining us here at Martha's Table today. We got a beautiful day, didn't we? Yeah. We got a beautiful day. I'm Kim R. Ford, the proud president and CEO of Martha's Table. That's what I'm talking about. Got some Martha's Table fans in the house. You know what we do at Martha's Table? We support strong children, strong families, and strong communities. And this year, we are 40 years old, and we are 40 years strong. All right. So this year has been full of surprises and heartache for so many of us, and we're very fortunate, fortunate to be able to come together in an appropriate and safe manner. Check out the chairs. Okay, distance is there to celebrate a meaningful occasion for this community and communities in Ward 7 and 8. On behalf of all the grantees, I would like to thank Mayor Bowser. Woohoo! I want to thank Mayor Bowser and I want to thank Director Donald as CFSA for providing the funding needed to organize and establish 10 family success centers. 10 family success centers. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Mayor Bowser's and Director Donald's vision will be realized here because we are going to be able to enhance our supports, such as things that we're hearing from the community, like emotional wellness. Here on this beautiful terrace, we will be able to have art and yoga for families in this community. Uh, in our partner hallway, the entire hallway upstairs, we're going to be able to bring in health screenings, important health screenings, and financial literacy car uh, coaching for families in this neighborhood. So we're very, very excited uh, about what we're going to be able to do, and it incorporates some of what we do here at Martha's Table, because you're going to be able to do all that via the Family Success Center, and you'll be able to leave with a bag of groceries, healthy groceries, of course. Uh, these centers represent the district's commitment to making each neighborhood in a place where families can thrive and where everyone in our great city gets a fair shot at success. And while they're listed all over these posters throughout the terrace, I want to give some shout outs to all of the family success centers. So we're going to start with Ward 7. And I know they are watching virtually, but uh, Benning Road and Minnesota Ave, East of the River Family Strength and Collaborative, and Benning Terrace, Benning Park, East of the River Family Strengthening Collaborative, and my colleague, May Best, congratulations. Clay Terrace, Sasha, uh, Sasha Bruce Youth Work, my colleague, Debbie Shore, Mayfair Paradise, North Capital Collaborative, my colleague, Sharon Ellis, Stoddard Terrace, 37th Street, Life Deeds, my colleague, Alu Kamara, and then the great Ward 8. No, great Ward 8, Woodland Terrace, smart from the start. My colleague, Cherie Kraft, Congress Heights, Far Southeast Family Street, the collaborative, the great Dion Bussy Reader. She's here, she's here. Washington Highlands, a wider circle. Mark Burgle, shout out to Mark. Our good friends in Bellevue, Community of Hope, who's also a, a, a roommate here, with us at the Commons, Kelly Sweeney McShane, and then, of course, here in Anacostia, Martha's Table. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to thank my colleagues, uh, the Martha's Table team, and we have Angela, our new Family Success Center manager who is here. We're so happy to have her. Tiffany, Johanna, Ray, Whitney, and everybody who's made today possible. Love this team, 1MT. So while they couldn't all join us physically in this space today, it's important that everybody here knows that Martha's Table is only one, only one of the 10 Family Success Centers on the ground, serving families and connecting them to services our great city offers. And now, I have the distinct honor and pleasure of introducing one of our family members, one of our great, great supporters, uh, and somebody we feel is a part of the Martha's Table team uh, in many, many ways, and that's Miss Rachelle Dennis. Miss Dennis is a parent here at Martha's Table. She's a volunteer. She's a colleague. She's a friend. Uh, she serves as an advisor on our strategic planning committee and she has just been such a beacon for us and has given us just light and love. And we appreciate you so much and are so glad that you're here today. And I want to shout out your Aunt Deirdre, who's here to support you. We love you. Come on up, Ms. Dennis. Love you. 
Thank you, Ms. Kim, again, and good morning, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Rachel Dennis. I am a Washingtonian, a native of the Ward 7 and Ward 8. I'm a single mom and I'm an entrepreneur. I'm joined today by my aunt, again, Deirdre Gary, and we are so proud to present today with Martha's Table, the launch of the Family Success Center. We are happy to be representing many families in Ward 7 and Ward 8 who are here to build relationships with the community and the organizations. And I would like to thank Mayor Bowser and the CFSA director, Ms. Donald, for their commitment and their support with the city, for the city families. As a proud Washingtonian and a Martha's Table parent, my family, my neighbors, and the community, we are excited for the new Family Success Center that will provide services, resources, and programs to help every family in the city thrive, as well as connect the Anacostia neighborhood with the Martha's Table and the Family, the family Success Center. During this pandemic, myself and many others were impacted in many different ways with hardships. Being an entrepreneur, I was not able to get a lot of the help and the resources that others were able to get because I do not have a normal working job like everyone. But Martha's Table and the Family Success Center, the family, they stepped up. They helped with cash assistance. They helped with food. They helped with clothing, resources with mental health, with me being able to call and contact them whenever I needed them. Currently also helping with housing to be able to ha have a home for me and my son. So I would like to thank them for that because I know that this Family Success Center is what we local neighbors and community, we actually do need during this time. So with, with all honor and all the pleasure that I have in my heart, I am so thankful that today I got to be picked to introduce DC, Washington, DC's very own Mayor Mariel Bowser. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's give Rachel a big round of applause. And uh, President Ford and all the employees and volunteers here at Martha's Table, give them a big round of applause. Um, we were so pleased uh, to be here when this beautiful building opened, the gardens here, and all of the supports for families that Martha's Table has been providing for 40 years. Uh, and we're also very proud uh, to have relied on Martha's Table over the last six plus months uh, and turning on a dime uh, to support families in the middle of this pandemic. So let's give Martha's Table another big round of applause. That wasn't that big. So it, it then it shouldn't be a surprise to you uh, why it was so important for, for us in the government uh, to look to trusted community partners to do the work that we do each and every day. Uh, Director Donald is going to tell you more about that approach. Uh, but basically what it says is that families will go to people that they trust for help for any number of things, whether it's nutrition support, whether it's help with other family issues, whether the children need help at school, whether there are employment issues, all of those things can be best delivered from trusted community partners in the community. So think about the family success centers as extensions of the government uh, with all of the resources that we bring to bear. And we bring a lot of resources to bear. Uh, and Director Donald has a fantastic vantage point uh, to use her agency at Child and Family Services, all of our human services agencies, employment services agencies, to make sure we have the things that we need. So sometimes people ask me, Mayor Bowser, what are you doing to promote public safety? What are you doing to promote pathways to the middle class? And I always tell them 
don't just focus on what we have to do with public safety and enforcement. Focus on all the programs and services that we have put in place over the last six years to promote opportunity for D.C. residents. And we always put opportunity front and center for making sure more Washingtonians have pathways uh, to the middle class. So we are partnering, uh, as you heard Kim and Rachelle say, to bring 10 10 family success centers to Ward 7 and 8. Uh, and so when I came in, I asked um, Director Donald, because you may have heard we had a tough budget year uh, and we had to change our budget. And one of the things that we thought we might have to do was to trim this program. Uh, to trim it because all new programs got a lot of scrutiny. When you have to cut $800 million in two weeks, you have to give a lot of scrutiny to a lot of programs. And so what Director Donald did was not trim anything uh, from the 10 Family Support Services Centers, but ask them to do some things differently and to do more so that we didn't have to trim one, one neighborhood. Uh, and so we stand here today, despite a $800 million dip, uh, with what we plan, 10 Family Support Centers in Ward 7 and 8. And so I am just um, so honored and delighted to be here with Martha's Table. I'm honored to represent the employees of D.C. government who put a lot of thinking behind making sure that these family success centers um, would be a success. Uh, I'm proud of the nonprofit partners that engaged with us, that submitted very robust plans uh, and a willingness to be held accountable by us because we will hold you accountable for delivering on exactly what you say that these success centers should do for D.C. residents. And with that, I'm honored to introduce Director Brenda Donald, uh, who is the director of CFSA. Uh, she's held a number of positions in D.C. government. Uh, and I dare say uh, the, the children uh, that she serves at CFSA are very near and dear to the work that she does in government. Thank you, Director Donald. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Is it afternoon? You know, I had, I had a little butterflies um, in, in my stomach as I drove up Morris Road. And it wasn't just because I was coming here to talk to you with the mayor, because I'm always happy to see her, um, but it's because as a little girl, I walked up that street. And I went to Moton Elementary School right across the street. So yes, having these family success centers and having Martha's Table here in the heart of where our families live is really meaningful. And when the mayor and I announced last year the family's first DC um, grantees, it was last December. Of course, none of us could have known what life had in store for our families in DC just a few short months later. But what we do know is that when fam we put families first and support the needs of children and parents, the whole community benefits. Yesterday, I spoke at a national, virtually, at a national conference, Child Welfare League of America, and told a little bit about D.C.'s journey to reduce the number of kids in foster care. And we're the, really the only child welfare agency in the country that has sustained a reduction over the last 10 years. Thank you, madam. Thank you, everybody. That, that is worth it. You know, we used to have three, over 3,300 children in foster care. And that's when the city had 100,000 fewer people. We now have 700. It really is remarkable, but we continue to serve families with our community partners. And the only way we can do that is by joining arms with all of our sister agencies and our community partners and continuing to serve families, but to serve them in different ways. And I see former council member Sandy Allen there nodding because she used to chair our committee and <laughs> would ask for these questions so she knows what I'm talking about. But this Families First DC, you know, we've heard that directly from families about all of the challenges that they've, um, that, that they've been experiencing. And I'm so proud of our partners because each one of them has been on the ground and that's why we wanted to partner with them doing the work throughout this pandemic, giving away food, distributing, linking um, families to services, providing clothing, 
and working as a network across all of these sites. So when, when, when Kim Ford talked about her colleagues, they've been working in a planning process as a network of family success centers, making each other stronger and relying, relying on each other to do this work. So the goal is really simple. It's for families first, for the family success centers to connect families with resources, as the mayor said, and integrated services. It's not to duplicate what the government does because we are very resource rich and very innovative in types of services that we provide. It is to help families to navigate those resources, to figure out what works best for them, what do they need in order to make their families successful, and then to provide a community, to provide inviting spaces where they can thrive and that they can be supported and can come together and continue to grow. All of the centers look different. Um, we have some that are entire units in mixed-use buildings. Um, we have some that are dedicated rooms in churches and co-located for on, with some of their services with our libraries. And I think, Mayor, we're going to have one that's going to be co-located or at least partnering some days with a school, which I know was your vision. And to those that are part of a larger, more comprehensive operation like Martha's Table. And I think that's the beauty of this. And again, it's a learning environment so that each can build on what um, the others bring. This global health pandemic has altered our country. It's altered our city and so many of our lives. But we launched this Families First DC effort before the pandemic. And due to the dedication of our grantee partners, we are so proud that the planning work continued uninterrupted. And I want to acknowledge my small but mighty Families First DC team. They're standing and sitting in the back. Stand up, Octavia Shaw, Kiara Streeter, and Dominique Griffin. They have led the planning process along with our uh, partner, community partner, Link Strategic um, Partners that led really intensive community planning processes. So thanks to everyone who has made this a reality. And thank you to Martha's Table for hosting us today. So let's get going. Thank you. So thank you, CFSA. Thank you, Martha's Table, and all of our partners um, that are going to help us launch the Family Success Centers uh, in our city. And uh, so now I think I'm taking questions. Any questions? I'll start with the community and then move to the press. Any community questions? Yes, ma'am. Robin? Good. I was wondering, will they have to have referrals to get connected to different resources and things that they need in a household for the families? That's a great question. Brenda, the question was, how does a family access support at the Success Center? Do they come through referrals? Yes, great. They can come a number of ways. Families can come and walk in. There's a welcome room um, that has been created um, for families to come in and we do, we'll have an intake process so that we can learn a little bit about families, right? Because we want to figure out what are your needs and what are your goals. And then they'll put together a plan that will help you to accomplish those. So you can be referred, but you don't have to be referred. You can walk in. This is not a government center. This is your community center in your neighborhood. Any other questions? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do you have to be a member of that community to visit that family center location? No. The expectation is that you would be because it's close by where you live and we want, you know, access is important. But some families might have their children going to another school in another neighborhood. And if that's more convenient, then um, our center directors have decided that they're going to allow some fluidity. And then some of the centers are partnering because they have more um, specialized services. So depending on your family's plan, the service that you need most directly may be in another center. And so they will work collaboratively on that. Before I move on, uh, let me acknowledge our community leaders who are here. You've already heard our former council member acknowledge, but Sandy, I want to thank you for your presence here and your specific and no long knowledge on these issues. Uh, Regina Pixley, ANC Commissioner 8CO4. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here. Uh, Monique Diop, 
Hi, Mo. Okay, that's commission. Is it die up? Dope. Okay, got it. Uh, and also, Dion Reeder was acknowledged pre previously from the Far Southeast Collaborative. Thank you, Dion, for being here. Are there any other community questions? Okay, yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Mustafa Abdul Salam, I'm an ANC commissioner for KCO5. Okay, commissioner, and, uh, thank I you. I just want to thank you for uh, what you created. Um, and I know uh, Brenda um, comes with a lot of experience and years in, in child welfare, and her uh, expression of this being cutting edge is correct. Uh, and I really appreciate it. I, I think there's an opportunity in Ward 8 to connect child welfare um, to economic development in ways uh, that I think is key. Because poverty, uh, the, the other side of poverty is wealth building. And, and so these families that are coming through these centers, uh, I think it's important that we connect them to some opportunities to build wealth uh, as a way of a mechanism to, to help their families. So no, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that you're going to find, and I think that you see one critical element of this model is that families will come and identify their goals and our our folks here will help them identify some needs and resources around that so l financial literacy how to build wealth how to start a business these are all aspects of family success now you notice um, sometimes i think in the one of the reasons why uh, this center is called family success our approach is always to address people's aspirations and sometimes to, seldom we seldomly um, do that sometimes we just address need and that's the need for right now right so we're going to help people deal with their needs for right now but just everybody has an aspiration and a hope and a goal and that's what we also want to focus on um, when you come to us absolutely talk to us about your needs for right now but what about next year and a year after that and a year after that? And what about the, the aspiration and goals for your children? That's what family success is about. Uh, and what we know is that our, our residents, our neighbors that are going to be coming to, to these centers, they have aspirations, hopes, and talents just like everybody else. Uh, and there's really no reason. There have been impediments perhaps uh, in the past, but how are we going to help you realize your your talents and in, in your aspirations so that that's what these these centers are about all right press questions y yes sam it can be about this or can it be about anything yeah. it can be about anything okay. um, i wanted to ask about uh, you had a, apparently a spike in covid cases in the city uh, apparently up to 105 i understand and i saw that they're back down today um but uh, could, could you talk to us at all about some people are looking at the White House situation? Are you getting any communication with the White House at this point? And are these cases as a result of the spike, as a result of more people going to the center because of the publicity around the White House? So Sam's question was about um, the daily case numbers that we released for Monday um, that were um, I don't remember what they were. They were 100 or something, 105. And that today's case, daily case report, it was like 45, I think. And your question is, is it because of more testing related to the White House? Is that right? Okay. So let me say that in, throughout SAM, we never really focus on a daily rate because the, we know they can fluctuate for a lot of different reasons. And so we think that Monday, the case for Monday is similar. Uh, we did have more tests done on this Monday than we had on the previous Monday. Uh, and so we will continue to look for for the cases throughout the coming week. So I can't link um, this Monday's reporting to any specific event or tell you exactly why it, it was a higher number than the previous Monday. When we talked to you on Monday, you, you were saying basically that you were getting no communication from the White House. Um, uh, Sam's question was, on Monday I said I got no communication from the White House. So let me just kind of step back. And I also said on Monday, 
uh, that we uh, reached out on a couple of levels to the White House, um, and we did get a response on Monday uh, later in the day where Dr. Nesbitt was able to talk to um, the the medical office, I think, deputy director, and understand uh, what their processes are. So we did get a communication back from them. Anything you can tell us about from that conversation? Um, well, I, I can tell you that Dr. Nesbitt asked them um, about their processes. Uh, she shared with them uh, our capabilities and how we could uh, be uh, supportive as well. And I expect that that dialogue uh, will continue. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, my name is Lola, and I'm with the Washington Post. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay. I may have to ask you to repeat. Oh, okay. What I just said? Or? No. I can okay. hear you. Okay, I heard sorry. that part. <laughs> sorry. Um, could you talk more about the specific um, health services that you hope the centers will connect families to during the pandemic? And then could you talk about how concerned you are about the outbreak at the White House and on the Capitol and how that may affect D.C. residents? Uh, your first question was what services are provided here? Specific health services. I know uh, people talked about emotional wellness, and um, but I'm wondering if there will be any specific COVID-related health services to connect families to during this time. Um, I don't think that we... Yeah, we would be letting them know what's generally available in the city. Talk about how concerned, like as you move to connect uh, families to more services, more health services, how concerned are you about the outbreak at the White House and at the Capitol? Uh, we're concerned about um, the spread of COVID-19 in our city, regardless of where it happened. Uh, we're also very concerned that everybody, regardless of where they work, are following scientifically justified protocols um, that will prevent the spread of the virus. So our emphasis is on telling people to wear a mask, to social distance, uh, to stay at home if you're sick, to wash your hands frequently, uh, to get tested if you have been exposed, and to isolate during that process. Uh, it, we, we've already said uh, that those people attending large events uh, where there are known exposures should monitor their, uh, their, how they are feeling. They should get tested and they should quarantine. Yes, sir. Uh, if I could follow up on the White House. Sure. Did Dr. Nesbitt ask, or did the White House give any specifics on their process for contact tracing, specifically any information about D.C. residents who either have tested positive in the White House or may have been exposed, and, and what they're doing as far as contact tracing for those people at the White House who live in the District of Columbia? Um, I don't, I, I, she told me, I can tell you what she told me. I wasn't on the phone, so I, I can't give you everything that they talked about other than uh, they confirmed uh, what they were doing around uh, contact tracing uh, at the White House. Uh, is in, let me also kind of, and this is, this is for everybody, whether you work at the White House or another D.C. employer, uh, all D.C. residents should recognize that D.C. Health um, protects their information. Uh, and so D.C. Health will not talk about a specific White House staffer um, to, to anybody. Uh, and so anybody who works at the White House should feel very confident in going to a public health site going to their private doctor or going uh, to the White House Health Service. Uh, any information sent to us will be, uh, they will be treated just like any other person using one of our facilities. Are you confident now after this communication between your health department and the White House that the White House is actually doing everything they can to properly contact trace and contain the spread of the virus at the White House and throughout the um, I, I would say that uh, the Dr. Nesbitt had one conversation, and I expect that she's going to have more conversations before I would say that. Can I follow up on today's event? Yes. Uh, I'm actually wondering if we could hear more from the woman who introduced you. Uh, just some personal anecdote. Why this community family 
these centers are important to her, her family, and her community. Would you like to do, say something more, Rochelle? Okay. Uh, the family, the actual family success center, to answer your question, is a center that you actually can just walk into. Um, they do actually ask you questions. They do go over your goals. Um, for instance, I had, I, excuse me, it's my nerves. I had the opportunity when my son started here a year ago, I was going through a serious hardship. I, I was facing a, a tremendous hardship because I was going through a lot by myself. I had a older child, my children are 16 years apart. Unfortunately, I found myself in a really bad domestic violence situation where I became a mom by myself with my son. Martha's table, when I came to the resource center, I spoke with them, I told them what my needs were. I look at Martha's table staff like big sisters. I always say that to them because whenever I go to them and say I need something as far as resources for a doctor, a dentist for my son, for clothes, for uh, my son right now is being helped with special needs for his education needs, for his speech, food, uh, cash assistance, winter clothes. I volunteer. I started working and volunteering at Martha Sable in 2014 with my church. I was helping the homeless. I was not in the same situation. I was doing okay. Life happened and I became someone who needed the help and the resources. So when I came and I drove past Martha Sable because my family grew up in Ward 8, the church right here, my great grandmother, 102 years old, when she passed, I drove past here and I said the same thing as Director Donald. When did they put this over here? Who, who put this in Southeast? Oh my gosh, Southeast is really building up. And I, I came in, I was like, oh my gosh, Martha Sable Uptown, they have one in Southeast. I immediately started coming over here and helping. So they have connected me with organizations. I, I, I work with Lyft DC. They are now helping me with my, my business needs. And because of COVID, the cash assistance that Martha's Table helped them provide it with the resources from the program helped me to start an online home-based business to help me so that I could provide for my son. So these, these resources do help. They help me to stay committed. They help me to stay, uh, you know, uh, with my integrity to continue to do what is good in this community to tell people in the community that they are here. I refer them all the time. I talk about Martha's Table like I work here, but I don't. Um, <laughs> but they do, they do help moms. And I am a single mom. I am a resident. I'm a Washingtonian. I love, I don't care what anyone say, the negative. I am the positive of Southeast. I want people to understand this is like this center can really help. If you want the help, come and get the help. They help you. So to answer your question, sir, anything that you need, if you need help, if you need food, if you need recipes, if you need nice clothing, if you want to donate your clothes, I, I bring my grandparents, my great aunts and uncles who still live in this area 30, 40 years. They come and they get their food. I help volunteer when I can due to COVID. Sometimes I don't because of my son. But we do try. I try my best to help and to try to give back as much as I can. And I will always stand with Martha's table in this community because it does work. If you want the Family Success Center to work for you, it can totally work on all of your goals. They, it does, it does, sir. It 100% it works. So I hope that if anyone is watching, if you know anybody, refer them to the local family success center, refer them to Martha's table, whatever your aspirations, like the mayor said and goals are. My aspirations are to be, as she said, someone way bigger, but to always give back to my community. When I make it, I'm going to continue to give back because there are people like me who needed the help. I got the help. I'm using the help and I'm helping other people. So I thank you again, thank mayor. You. Uh, Director Donald, Miss Kim, I love you, my Martha's Table family, for really allowing me to come here today and show you what success really looks like when you use the Family Success Center. All right, thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rachelle.